Our next guest is Dan Corson. Dan came to Boulder in 1973 to attend law school. After 20 years of practicing law, he then earned his master's degree for historic preservation from the University of Colorado in Denver. Dan has served on the Landmarks and Planning Boards and two terms on the Boulder City Council. He currently works in the Office of Archaeology and Historic Preservation at the Colorado Historical Society in Denver. Dan, the Hotel Boulderado is a City of Boulder landmark. Can you explain to us how that came about? Well, that came about in 1976, and actually that was a couple years prior to my involvement with historic preservation in Boulder. So what I know, I rely upon others in reading the record. Um, and 1976 was a very interesting year. As we've heard, it was the beginning of the renaissance of the Hotel Boulderado, uh, so to speak. The Pearl Street Mall was under construction. Uh, I came, as you said, in 1973, and it was a much different place. I, I can relate that law students, as well as IBM executives, uh, frequented the catacombs. <laughs> that was a real, it was a real treat to come to the catacombs as a law, uh, law student, actually. Uh, and my boss, who is, the, uh, who is a PhD and a state archaeologist, she was one of the grad students who lived here in the early 1970s. The rates were such that some of the country's poorest citizens were able to, to live here at the Boulderado. And uh, there was uh, discussion in 1976 that the hotel might be demolished due to deferred maintenance issues, which was a, a common response to older buildings back in the 60s and 70s. We got to fix them up, therefore they should come down to make way for a parking lot. Historic Boulder did not think that was a good idea. It was a rather young organization and filed a nomination to landmark this building, to which the owners at that time eventually consented. Um, and of course that set the stage uh, for um, uh, what has occurred since. Uh, I did work with Frank Day in 1981, as I recall, on a facade donation easement to Historic Boulder. The hotel is also listed on the National Register of Historic Places, which makes an owner eligible for a charitable tax deduction when that, when that is done, and so that was a long time ago now. Uh, but I also have two more personal recollections of the, the Boulderado that I'd like to relate. Nice. Uh, the Italian restaurant, which replaced the first catacombs, and I forget its name, um, sponsored a Franco's, Franco's, Franco's a, a spaghetti yeah. eating contest in 1982. <laughs> I was president of Historic Boulder that year, and therefore somehow was the entrant. <laughs> and uh, for the organization. And I was very fortunate not to win my round because that meant going on and eating more spaghetti in a <laughs> succeeding round, which followed immediately. And uh, I recall that my wife Sharon and the friends who were with us wanted to go out to dinner. And so we all went to another restaurant on Pearl Street. <laughs> and I sat and watched, sat rather uncomfortably, and watched the rest <laughs> of them eat. Uh, and Sharon and I also spent our honeymoon night at the Hotel Boulderado 27 years ago today. Oh, oh nice. we, we were married in Rudy Harburg's house, the McGinnis house up at 1040 Mapleton around the corner from here. And her family and mine had spent the day before and the day of the wedding, it was a Labor Day wedding, Labor Day weekend wedding, um, working on that house. So we planted flowers, we, I mean, we by hand replaced the screen in the front door. Uh, we actually had a stair rail replaced. We were married on the landing, which was designed by the same architect as this one. It's identical in architectural detail. There was one missing, so we had that replaced. And after the wedding, we stayed and cleaned up. We walked here and were so exhausted, we fell into bed and went right to sleep. <laughs> now, we have not been back to the Boulderado for a night since that time, unfortunately. Oh, it's time. It's surely time.